All right, so now we've seen how to work with GraphQL to get data from our Strapi backend. Now I want to make things more interesting by adding another content type into the mix. But not only that, I want that data type to be related to our review content type that we already have. So first of all, let's create the new content type. Go to the content types builder and choose new collection type. Now call this type category and then hit continue and we'll give it a single field which is going to be the category name and that will be a text field so click on that call the field name and then go to advanced settings to make this field required and then click on finish then we need to save our new content type so now we have this new content type which is called category let's make some new category records First, select categories from the left menu and add a new category. Now, I'm going to call the first one PS5 and click on save and then publish. And now I'll just create two more. So then now we have three different categories and I want to be able to associate my reviews with one or more categories, right? So in essence, we're making our reviews and categories related. This is what I mean by relational data. So how do we go about doing this? Well, first of all, we go back to the content types builder and we select our review type and then we click on add another field and this time we want to select relation this is how we relate our content types so in this box on the left is what we want to call the property for this relation now we're going to call it category and on the right we select what content type we're relating this to this is a drop down so just make sure you have the category content type selected now in the middle we have a load of these boxes with different icons now these icons represent the different types of relationships these two data types can have the first one means that each review can only have one category and it's also a one-way relationship the second one is similar each review can only have one category but now it's a two-way relationship meaning the category will also get a review property which points back to the review now, the third one is a one to many relationship, meaning each review can have several categories, but each category can only have one review associated with it. The fourth is a many to one relationship, meaning a category can have many reviews belonging to it, but each review can only go into one category. And the next one, which is what we'll be using, is a many to many relationship, meaning a single review can belong to many categories and each category can have many reviews associated with it. You'll also notice the name of the property on the category will be called reviews, plural. Okay, so click on finish now and then save the content type. And next, we need to update our review content to put each review in a category. So I'm going to do that by going to our reviews and then clicking on each one of these. So Biomutant, and you can see now we get this other field, categories. And we can click on this to choose one of the categories we created. So I could put it in the PS5 category and I could also put it in another one, Xbox, for example. Then I'll save this. So I'm going to do the same thing for Mario Golf. This is just for the Switch. I'm going to save that. And then Mario Kart 8, again, just for the Switch, save. And then finally, Rocket League, I'm going to click and that's going to be for Xbox and also PS5 and also the Switch. So save that. And also now, if you go to categories and click on one of these, you're going to see that the games right here, or the reviews rather, are associated with this category. And you can also add reviews this way. So you can do it both ways. Either add the categories from the reviews or the reviews from the categories. Okay, so now our two data types are related and later we'll see how we can fetch related data from the front end. For example, I could fetch the PS5 category and all the reviews related to that category in one query. For now though, let's just fetch the categories themselves in the nav bar and list them out so we can see them in a browser. So inside the site header component, first of all at the top, I'm just going to import a couple of things, use query and GQL. So we're going to make this query the same as normal. First of all, we create the constant up at the top 
and I'm going to call this categories, but you can call it what you want. And we set that equal to GQL and then a template string. And inside here, we'll create a query. I'm going to call this get categories like so. And then inside that, we want all of the categories. So categories, and then for each category, we want the name and also the ID. All right, so now down inside the component, I can use the use query hook. So we grab the loading, the error and the data from use query and we pass in the categories. Next, I also want to show loading if it's loading or error if there's some kind of error fetching them. So we're going to do the same thing as we did for the pages. If it's loading, we return this template. If there's an error, we return this template. Otherwise, once we have the data, we're going to return this template right here. All right then. So what I'm going to do is now create a nav. So let me do that for the different categories. So nav, and this is going to have a class name. So we can style it later, equal to categories like so. Now inside this, I'm going to do a span tag first of all, and that's going to say filter categories by, or filter reviews rather, that should be filter reviews by category and then a colon. Okay, so now what I want to do is map through the categories. So let's do curly braces and then say data, which is what we get back right here, uh, this thing right here. And then we're gonna have a property on that called categories. So dot categories, and then we use the map method. And I'm gonna refer to each category as just category. And for each one, we want to return a bit of template. So we're gonna return a link tag and that link is going to have a key property, which is going to be equal to the ID of the category. Remember, we get the ID right here. So I can say category.id. And also we need to say where it's going to go. So two is equal to, and then curly braces, template string, forward slash category, forward slash the ID. Because remember, that's the route we set up right here. So the ID we can output using dollar sign curly braces and then category dot ID. So that's where it's going to go to. We also need some text inside the link and that is just going to be the category name. So category dot name, which is the other property we got right here. So then it might not look very good at the minute, but hopefully they should be output to the browser. Let's have a look. And it says error fetching categories. And that's because remember we've set up now a new data content type and by default the permissions are set so that they're not public. So remember when we had to go into reviews earlier and we had to say that look anyone even if they're not logged in can request certain data we have to do the same thing now for the categories. So go to settings and then go to roles and then go to public and down here we need to select find and also find one and then we need to save this. So now if we go back over here, if we refresh, we can see now all of these categories at the top. They're all kind of bunched into one word, so you can't really distinguish them, but we can click on PS5, for example, and that's gonna take us to category one. If we click on Xbox, it goes to category two, and switch to category three. Okay, so let's just add a tiny bit of CSS to make this look a bit better. So all I'm gonna do is go to index.css and paste in where we do the site header, two more rules, dead simple. Site header categories, which is the class of this thing right here, the nav. And we save for that, text align right, so it should go all the way to the right. And then after that, any anchor tag inside that, give it a margin left, just to space out those categories right here. So let's save it and see what this looks like. Yep, loads better. All right, so we're grabbing that data now, and all of this functionality is working. We're going to these different category pages. The next thing to do is list the reviews associated with those categories. So we'll do that in the next lesson.